Uh, yeah, so I'm Matt Gordon, and I do I do the Ruby News. Um, and for those of you that are new or haven't seen me do this before, uh, most of the time what I do is for each of the news items, it's difficult to really come up with a good picture. So instead, I take the first image, the first safe for work image from Google Image Search, which you would be very surprised what comes up safe and what does not. Um, so this, for example, is the first image for Ruby News Roundup. Okay. I have not one clue. I assume that's Ruby. <laughs> Clearly our new mascot, by the way. The page, the page does not appear to contain the word Ruby. Are we all text? I have no idea. Probably 3.1. <laughs> or I mean, uh, Rails 3.1. I don't know. So, let's see. What we got. Uh, oh. All right, yes. Sometimes I don't remember what they are. Uh, this is uh, RubyGems uh, 1.8. Uh, came out. And if you look at the change log, it looks pretty good. I don't know. Google Image does whatever it does. I think those are Ruby Gems. Yeah, they're Ruby Gems. This, this was labeled the Ruby Gem Magic Clock or something. So. Version 1.8. You ever like switch it up and go to Bing Images? That's, no. <laughs> uh, so the change log looked pretty innocuous. But uh, followed up by a blog post that was like, no, this is this is serious for reals. They deprecated 22 plus methods in this release, basically basically trying to clean things up. So anybody who maintains the gem, uh, don't be surprised if you think starts spewing deprecation warnings. And the the article is actually surprisingly a little hostile towards Rails. So it was like, yes, this means you too are going to have to change. You really are going to remove these methods, even if you don't fix yourself. So. How many people in here maintain a gem? Of any kind? Uh, what if you should be maintaining a gem? Raise your hand if you should or are. <laughs> okay, so some people. Okay, so be aware of that. It, the blog post didn't actually say when, just that they were serious. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, this one I just decided to go with. I mean, this is what I have to work with sometimes. So. This is the Google image search for draft schedule of Ruby 1.93. Now, I don't know what the deal is with all these Star Wars <laughs> pictures, <laughs> but I also have Pure Bear, The Rock, and some mountain. So this is, this is usually what I have to work with, these things. Uh, right, so the draft schedule of uh, Ruby 1.93 came out. It came out a little later because of the earthquake, but I don't think anybody was complaining about that. The uh, basic plan right now for 193 is to do uh, a feature freeze at the end of this month, and then an implementation freeze in January, and then, assuming that all goes well, uh, have an actual release uh, later in 2012. So hold on to your shorts. 193 is right around the corner, you guys. <laughs> How many people are on 19 at all? One. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of this as the hand goes up. That's okay. all I know. Yeah. <laughs> totally started a project on one. Yeah, I think How many people started a project yesterday? Yes. <laughs> How many people have at least tried to use one nine? As in Rails yeah. news. Okay. All right. That's, that's pretty good. Is there some way that can make a presentation on RBM? Sure. Mm -hmm. Anthony, Anthony did just did one. The, the uh, Heroku default stack is about to move to one point nine. I did not. Less than a month. I did not see that. There you go. They're not getting rid of the 187 stack, though. It's still there. I just want to be put a new project. It's going to be default to 192. Mm. Valuable information for those of you that use Heroku. Also, Engineer announced it was good to go for 192. Okay. In case anybody. How long has 192 been out? Two years now or something. Okay. I'm just, just, just throwing that out there next to the Engineer is now ready for 192 <laughs> thing. Well, it must be enterprise quality. <laughs> what, Engineer? <laughs> Bam! Yeah, wasn't it like they only have like like four thousand customers or something? Two thousand. Hey, hey, they're a sponsor. Oh, uh, I mean, NPR oh. is great, you guys. <laughs> Are they right. still? Uh, not really now, but they have been and could be again. They do write lots and lots of code there. They have lots of stuff that runs yeah. on their servers that has lots of stuff. Edit that up. <laughs> 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 They're good guys. How about that? Yeah, yeah. 
In addition to uh, in, in addition to this 193 announcement, there's also uh, a blog post about uh, the, the documentation challenge. Uh, according to the blog post, 50% of the of Ruby methods have zero characters of documentation <laughs> entirely. So, you know, calling all cars to write anything yeah, but at is all. That, is that a, is that that's, maybe that's a reflection of the language, right? That you don't. I mean, read, it, it is very self-documented code. Right? The ultimate dream, right? Well, like for example, he, he said that he just wrote the first <laughs> the first high-level documentation for WebRick. There's just no documentation at all for WebRick. <laughs> like what, not even like a paragraph explaining what WebRick web is. I mean, I'm sure you could read the code and find out. But <laughs> yeah. So okay. apparently, there's lots of room to contribute there. So low-hanging fruit, if you want to contribute. Um, Pedal bear. <laughs> Rails three one beta one. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, yep. Rails three. Rails three one beta one came out with the usually, you know, strong posts from DHH saying, "Here's some stuff you can try it." I'm not going to explain how it works. Uh, so, has anybody ever actually used Edge for anything? I, had, I did once in 2008. Yeah, it's exactly. about right. About when I did. Yeah. One, two, three or so. Experience. <laughs> I was complaining to Miles about it today. <laughs> there you go. Not. Did you mean Rails 3.1 Edge? No, no, I just meant Edge. Yeah. Ever. Don't ever do it. Because you'll, you'll be fixing your crap. You'll be scratching your head wondering why all your tests are failing every day, and it's a different test every time you update to the latest Edge. And then you kind of once you find one that's like kind of stable, you're like, okay, I'm not touching it. We're not upgrading. I don't care how many more patches they release. It's terrible. That seems like a good plan. So everyone should sign right up for this. <laughs> or you could wait the like three weeks the DHH says it's going to take to get a real release candidate that will also supposedly have documentation for all these features that they may or may not have added. Or anybody that's made a really good just all the changes. Okay. Don't watch the uh, Rails cast of it. I'll make you want to upgrade. Apparently, apparently there are, other than the defaults changing, what's the... Anything exciting? Well, it automatically compiles your all your style sheets and JavaScripts. Yeah. Puts all those into the assets it, folder. It's got like all the coffee script and, and SAS integrated yeah. really does it, strongly. Does it make me breakfast? Flushing the view as it's yeah. being what? generated yeah. is coming out. Oh yeah. So, so the page will start rendering quicker. I mean on the browser side. So there's some good stuff. Yeah, and it's got active. better engine support. Okay. Streaming. Streaming. Yeah, that's, assets. Oh, that's the word for what I was. Okay. Yeah. And it has identity map for the object cache for active yes. records. Yes. Yes. So identity map. Object cool. is cached in memory. Like oh, just okay. once. Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. So instead of having that's a query cache and, and yeah. oh, reading more objects. I thought one of the best things is that uh, if you have a form field in your form, you don't have to put multi-part on there. It just automatically <laughs> does it for you. So oh. every time I forget to do that and go, uh, why is this not working? So it'll I can quit installing the fix multi-part being stupid plugin. Yeah. <laughs> is that exist? Yeah. yeah. Did you write it? Yeah. Oh, did you write it? <laughs> did Mike write it? <laughs> one of us wrote it. Somebody's good behavior wrote it. Uh, another thing they added that's actually pretty cool is uh, Authorization is built on the active record now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you do attribute accessible as something. Yeah, secure passwords. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the decrypts secure passwords at the same time. Everyone upgrade to Edge right now has all the. That's cool some pretty stuff. cool stuff. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering, wondering what, what happens to clearance and auth logic and all those. With well, stuff. all he added was basic auth with, with crypting. Like, there's not. The whole ecosystem around this not there. Oh, okay. And the, I mean, the authorization stuff is really basic. It works pretty well with JNK yeah. and other stuff, but it's not a complete solution yet. Give it time. Rails 4 is, it'll basically be spree. <laughs> 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 yeah, that seems like a, a good direction for Rails to go. Let's yeah. build everything in. What else do we have? I just thought this was interesting. The, uh, the Rails help hotline free. Hotline, apparently you can call this number. There were no volunteers available where I would have called uh, to just to see what the deal was. Um, so 
apparently if you're a Rails expert, you can, <coughs> you can sign up to volunteer to take phone calls for people that need help. And if they're... That sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you like dispensing really terrible advice, you know. Anthony's <laughs> having office hours. He <laughs> really is. Oh, really? Yeah. When? Uh, well, I was supposed to do it Wednesday afternoon, four to six today, but uh, nobody signed up, so. Oh. Well. Okay. When? So you're just busy today. How would how would a person that wanted to use that find out when to? Is it every Wednesday? Uh, it was a, so I so this thing called ohours.org. You basically have office hours, and you can do it virtually, like through Skype or whatever, or through you know actually meeting people in real life. And awesome. so I opted for the real life one just to see what would happen. But nobody is on it from Indianapolis yet, so I didn't get any responses. <laughs> and I tweeted a couple times, which is probably not sufficient marketing. But well, my marketing is working. Yes. So the marketing is now spread. I, 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 I did not hear the intro to this, so <coughs> all I see is Rails expert. And oh. This, um, somebody decided to start. Start this thing. It's just a phone number you can call, and they hook you up with a volunteer that wants to answer your Rails questions. And anybody, anybody can can apply to be a volunteer. I don't know if they like authenticate that you know anything, or <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't clear. I, I might apply just to see what happens. Right, hello yeah, world. I, they do I'm have special it, uh, next month. So oh, okay. hopefully we'll get that going. Okay. <laughs> What's that? Do I get beers or something? Yes. That's not true. I put it in a Can I just like bring a six pack and then <laughs> make you help me with something I'm having an issue with? That sounds great. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it was exactly like office hours in college. <laughs> Compass 1.0? No. Uh, this is uh, Hamlet Sash 3.1. Uh, came out. Uh, lots and lots of really cool stuff. Uh, let's see. You can. Define your own functions, like the example they had in there was about like writing your own grid width function, um, or they have keyword parameters now, and in addition to the keyword parameters, they now have some functions that behave differently depending on the parameters you provide, uh, like some of the color functions, um, but some of the other <coughs> stuff that they added. Uh, don't have my notes. It's a separate gem now. Yes, they are separate gems. That was. They announced that they were they were doing that in like September of last year. Uh, this is the first like actual like feature release of, of Hamble and SAS in like a year. So I would explain why there's a whole crap load of awesome new features. So uh, they're so. on the same release schedule? Hamble and SAS. <coughs> they were the same gem for a, up until now. Uh, like they were within the Hamble gem. Uh, okay. So in the future it, they may not necessarily be released at the same time, but this time they were. Same same blog post and everything. So if you use those things, it seems like it would be really worth upgrading. <laughs> <laughs> this man was interviewed yeah. Yeah. RailsFreelancer.com. I read the interview. You should read the interview. Do you want to talk about the interview? Uh, I don't know. Do you want to read us the interview? I kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought it was just a survey. Uh, I don't know. That's all right. You're on there. Sweet. Plus, I love this picture. I'm internet famous now. Yeah, you're going on a website that nobody goes to. <laughs> I was there today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, ooh, what was this one? What was the last thing you told me, Miles? Oh, oh the IWST uh, Ruby testing workshop. Yes. Is uh, June fourth. Is June fourth. That's a uh, Saturday. Is it a Saturday? I'm going to say it's a Saturday. Oh, well, please talk about it. Um, I think we're just going over trying to get as many people who have done testing for Rails applications okay. as we can together. Performance testing, automation testing, maintenance testing, whatever you've done with a Rails application. Really, generally, pretty fun. Good group. Goes about three, four hours. So, get ready to go out to eat, get drinks afterwards. So if you would like to learn about testing or drink, this sounds like a thing for you. Uh, when is it? Where is it? Like the test um, I think we're at Anchor Point. It's June 2nd? June 4th. 4th this time? Okay. Yep. June 4th, 9 a.m.? Yes, that would be correct. Scheduled for approximately five hours? That sounds about right. I will be giving an experience report. Yes! <laughs> 
I might. It's is this on Meetup or is it in the show notes? It is on Meetup. Um, if you go to meetup.com <laughs> slash indie-testing. What, what is an experience report? Um, it's basically a presentation. Okay. Only it, it's it'll be more fostering discussion than me standing up with slides. Okay. It's about something you've done before, basically. Okay. So sometimes it's about horrible things that have happened. Okay. That too. Which is what options. mine was about. It. <coughs> this link, a link to this thing, and a link to everything else that I talked about, is at indierb.reddit.com. So you can look up all these blog posts or whatever. Um, In reddit.com. What's that? Yeah. I tried to post something. I had no karma though. So it didn't work. <laughs> Wait, what? You what? can't post if you don't have karma. Oh, yeah, really? You can. Because I've I posted couldn't. without <laughs> karma. Well, then I could. Well, you start with one. Oh. Maybe you just can't post oh. if you got interviewed on Rails Freelance. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should Maybe I posted problem. once before and got downvoted, <laughs> and now I have a. I don't know. <laughs> I will upvote you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just playing. Uh, did I miss any news? Is there anything that should have been mentioned that happened in the last month that I didn't cover? All right. Thank you.